Whatever city you enter and they receive you, eat such things as are set before you, and heal the sick there and say to them, the kingdom of God has come near to you. In the holy name of Jesus, amen. Today, the Holy Church throughout the entire world celebrates the feast of St. Luke, the evangelist. St. Paul once called St. Luke the beloved physician, the one who comes to heal the sick. Presumably, Luke was a physician, actual practical physician, one who literally healed the sick through the medicine and arts of a physician. But I think St. Paul had something more in mind when he called him the beloved physician in Colossians 4. He wasn't just a doctor of the body, but he is a doctor of the church. Like every one of those whom the Lord has sent to preach the gospel, that gospel message, that forgiveness of sins in Jesus Christ, is a healing medicine. It's a medicine that heals our sin-sick souls. It's a medicine that binds up the brokenhearted. Forgiveness of sins is the medicine that reconciles all of creation, including us, especially us, to God once and for all. Go and heal the sick there and say to them, the kingdom of God has come near to you. Second only to St. Paul, St. Luke is responsible for authoring a third of the New Testament. St. Paul, about half. (laughs) So a third. Of course, the Gospel according to St. Luke, which we heard this evening, and also the Acts of the Apostles, which I like to call Luke, Volume 2. Both of these books confess over and over who God is for us in Christ Jesus. St. Luke uniquely records of, say, the, the story of the Good Samaritan. That story where the Samaritan comes along the roadside and sees the man who had been ignored by his fellow man and by the priests, and the Samaritan alone helps him out of the ditch where he has been left for dead, takes him to the end, binds up his wounds, anoints him with oil for healing, and then gives to the innkeeper the promise that whatever is needed, I will pay you. Care for this man. Give him healing. Of course, Luke is also known, especially for the infancy narratives. Matthew records a few of those stories, but Luke have them in their fullness. Which then indicates to us and according to the tradition of the church, that Luke is the one who, in his research to record the gospel, interviewed St. Mary, the mother of Jesus. So it is that frequently throughout Luke's gospel, it is said of Mary that she pondered these things in her heart, or she stored them or treasured them in her heart, an indication that She remembered and she recalled them later to Luke for his gospel. Luke also has the story of the rich man and Lazarus, where Lazarus receives no healing in this life, but in the resurrection, he is comforted. While the rich man in this life was quite comfortable, but having no faith in Christ, then being in torment in Hades, seeks the comfort of the gospel, but now has set himself apart from it. In these ways, St. Luke is teaching us by all the parables and the infancy narratives. He teaches us through the Acts of the Apostles about what the work of the church is. It's to go and heal the sick and say to them, the kingdom of heaven has come near to you. So it is that the Lord continues to send to you preachers, pastors, who come with that unique task. Surely you you expect of your pastors many other things, to be maybe a friend or to be a presence in the community or 
uh, to just be a cheerful spirit or something. But according to the Scriptures, they've been given, really, one job. You had one job. It's to go and to preach that the kingdom of heaven is near to you. Namely, that Jesus Christ is here, near to you today, for the forgiveness of sins. So that every time that you gather, even if it's just two or three Christians gathered, you hear that saving message, really healing message, that binds up the brokenhearted, that cures the sin-sick soul. The message that your sins are forgiven freely for Christ's sake. Christ who shed his blood at the cross to make atonement, to cover your sins, to wash them away in the waters of baptism. And then I think Luke would have us remember that tonight as well we receive what has been called in the tradition of the church the medicine of immortality. That is, the body and blood of Christ under bread and wine. Again, for the forgiveness of sins. And uniquely, when you receive this sacrament, you hear those words that where there is forgiveness of sins, as Luther reminds us, there is life and salvation. That the message, that the medicine that you receive from the altar this evening isn't just an idea about forgiveness of sins. It actually takes sins away. It forgives them, blessing you not just in your soul, but actually in your body too. Maybe now, bringing healing, so it is the practice of our churches to bring the sacrament of the altar to those who are sick, that the Lord would give them healing. But most especially that where there is this forgiveness of sins, there is life and salvation. Namely, there is resurrection of the body and life everlasting on the last day. When finally, the healing not just of our souls, but of our bodies will be realized and experienced by us. As Christ calls to us all, as we lay to rest in our graves, calls us from those graves to awaken to life with him forever. That is the medicine that goes and heals the brokenhearted, that binds up the sick and the wounded, that promises everything that is needed for this body and life. So like St. Luke, the Lord has sent to you this evening to hear a, a messenger, a preacher, an evangelist, to say your sins are forgiven. Come, take and eat, take and drink for the forgiveness of your sins. In the name of Jesus, amen.